Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So in this video we are going to discuss some sample questions for Infosys InfiTQ uh, and we are specifically going to discuss about the pseudo codes which will be uh, coming up in the qualifier round and I will also explain you how to solve it and some tips and tricks to solve it. So that is what we are going to cover in this video. So this is the part one as you can read from this slide and uh, I will be coming up with the second version of it as well. So make sure to watch this video till the end. So the first concept which we are going to talk about is bit manipulation. Now bit manipulation is something which is really necessary if uh, you are into uh, programming and coding because it helps you do some kind of operations in a very efficient manner. So that is why you need to have a knowledge of bit manipulation and uh, the use of left shift and right shift operator especially because in case of pseudocode this is something where uh, students get confused because the left shift and right shift operations though they look easy you can mess up sometimes so we will be talking about that second we are talking about program structure and control what is the program or the pseudocode which is given to you in a way is it written in a way which will produce a desired output or is there something which is fishy and something is written but it uh, performs basically nothing so there can be times where a function has been written and there are some lines of code but it has no utility because it is never called in the main function so that can be a case because of which we are going to discuss about it third we are talking about functions and return types now it is also related to the previous point that is program structure and control because sometimes it might happen that there are two different segments of a program written where one is a main function and second is a function which needs to be called but uh, there can be a condition that uh, any value has been passed into the function but it has not been passed as a reference or like uh, through a pointer which means that anything which is happening inside a function is operating on the copy of the inputs passed into it and if the function has a void return type then it basically returns nothing so that is something which we also are going to talk about next is value assignment and why this is important because in these kind of pseudo codes sometimes the code segment might look confusing and it can lead to a wrong answer evaluation because you might miss something that has not been uh, taken into consideration that is why we are going to talk about value assignments as well we are talking about syntactic sugar as well because it is one of the best practices in coding and that is something which can be used in uh, your pseudocodes as well to confuse someone who doesn't have a prior experience to them or has not uh, been uh, aware about it so that can be something which can confuse students and then we are going to talk about use of conditional statements and uh, this can also again be done in a manner which might not look similar to the code which you used to do or uh, any kind of conditional statements like if else might not look the way uh, you used to so there can be a different condition there can be different conditions inside of an if state if if else statement and it can uh, evaluate to a different kind of a value as you know that uh, if condition or else condition evaluates to a boolean value and in that case if your boolean values are not calculated properly then you might miss a code segment which needs to be taken into consideration so we are going to talk about conditional statements as well at last we are going to talk about recursion because recursion is one of the most important things in pseudo codes because uh, your code might look like a 3 to 4 line of code and might look very uh, very easy but if you don't evaluate your recursive calls properly then you might evaluate a wrong answer so these are the points which you are going to talk about now full disclosure we are not going to go on it theoretically we are going to look at examples and we are going to touch on these points while looking at the examples directly so let's get started with the first example first example is as follows now what is the output for the following pseudocode for a equals to 125 so now you are given a code segment a pseudocode basically obviously it's a pseudocode so it will have some kind of things which might confuse you if you are looking at it for the first time so basically what this particular code segment is providing us is that we have a function called as fun1 fun1 and it has an integer input and again it has a return type of an integer now one more thing which i would like to mention is that for those who are coming from python don't expect it to be a pythonic code because every pseudo code which we are looking here is going to be based on a c style syntax it is going to follow a c style syntax behind the doors so don't expect it to be pythonic at all because you have to do evaluations based on C style syntax and why I am saying this point you will get to know it in a minute so let's look at the code 
what the code says is if the value of a is less than 4 we will return a minus 5 else we will return fun 1 in bracket we have a divided by 5 minus 2 and if end function fun 1 now as you can see that the point which i made just now about uh, the c style syntax is because as you can see that a divided by 5 is going to evaluate something if you go in the c style syntax it will evaluate to an integer however if you go into a python style uh, syntax it will give you a correct value in float and that is why i mentioned it prior to solving this problem that you have to expect it to be in a c style syntax so you have to evaluate everything in your pseudocode in that manner as well so let's look at it so we know that 125 is greater than 4 so we are not going into the if block we are going into the else block so in that case we are going to return fun one of bracket in the bracket we have a divided by 5 so we are going to pass in 125 in there and 125 by 5 is nothing but uh, 25 so 25 minus 2 is 23 and we are going to pass 23 inside the fun one function so now 23 is passed into the function and we can see that uh, 23 is again greater than 4 so we are not going to enter into the if condition we are going inside the else condition and then in that case we are going to pass 23 divided by 5 minus 2 so 23 divided by 5 will evaluate to 4 because it's an integer division again so 4 minus 2 is going to be 2 and we are returning 2 into our fun1 function now again 2 is less than 4 so now we are going to return 2 minus 5 that is minus 3 so our output in this case will be minus 3 so for the sake of explanation i have uh, explained everything in the form of comments here you can look at it and you can get an idea of what we are trying to do I would also encourage you to try to solve it on your own so that you get an idea as to how we are processing the information which we are getting and then we are passing it into a recursive function call. So let's look at another example. Now what is the output for the following pseudocode? So we have this pseudocode right here and we have five integer variables declared that is a, b, c, d and i and in the second line we are assigning values to all these variables. Now if you look at the code properly you will see that there is a while loop which has some operations following which there is another while loop or I should say a nested while loop inside a while loop. So what you can infer before solving the problem is that for any value for any value of B which you will get it can go beyond 15 and that's completely fine. But what is not fine is that once you enter the second loop that is the nested while loop you are not going to terminate it. How we can be so sure about it because in the second while loop as you can see that there is no termination condition it has been mentioned that if the value of b is less than 15 then only we are going to enter into the loop and then we are going to print d but what if the value is true what if b is less than 15 in that case we have to execute that code statement anyways so in that case we have to print the value of d whatever the value of d might evaluate to but how will we terminate it so we have an information that this particular line of code might go in an infinite loop so let's start processing this particular line of code so uh, we have a equals to 35 and c equals to 3 so now while a is greater than c so 35 is greater than 3 we will enter into the loop we have b equals to c plus d we have the value of c as 3 and the value of d as 0 so 3 plus 0 is 3 and the value of b also becomes 3 then we have d equals to c left shift i now in this case i would like to explain you in a short and simple manner that what is left shift and what is right shift so for any particular integer you have say 4 or 5 or 6 or any integer if you want to take any kind of operation which is a left shift on that particular integer will double the value of that integer provided you perform the left shift operation once. Similarly in the case of right shift the value will be halved provided that you do it only once. So how will you evaluate the parameter that how many times it needs to be done. So we have left shift operation on the variable c i times now in this case i is equal to 1 and c is equal to 3 so the value of c will turn to 6 because we are doing left shift operation i times and here i is equal to 1 so the value of c is now going to be 6 so now d is holding 6 and b is holding 3 so now we have evaluated up till now following which we have while b is less than 15 so um, the value of b is 3 so is 3 less than 15 yes it is less than 15 so we are going to evaluate it now we have the value of d as 6 so this will print the value 6 
infinite times and uh, in this case uh, the options which might be available to you can be in uh, a single integer variable or they can be uh, recurring uh, like 6666666 and so on so that can be a condition so in this case the value or the answer should be recurring 6 that should go on so um, considering that there are options in a single integer value so the output in this case would be 6 so I have uh, provided comments wherein what is happening in each line of code has been um, told here in this case. So I think that example is clear and makes a perfect sense to you. Now let's look at the third example. In this case we have to predict the output and we have the following set of code where we have to print the value of x and y. This is one of the uh, simple examples uh, which I have included in this video so that you have a basic idea of how things are processing. So in this case what we have is uh, we have two integers x and y and then we are setting the value of x as 3 and y as 5 and then we are performing some kind of operation where uh, we have used uh, the syntactic sugar in this case so we have x minus equals to y which simply means x is equal to x minus y. So the value of x in this case is going to be 3 minus 5 that is equals to minus 2 and then we have y equals to x plus y plus 2 which is going to be equal to minus 2 plus 5 that is equal to 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. So y is holding 5 and x is holding minus 2. Following which we again have an operation x minus equals to 3 which means x is equal to x minus 3. So the current value which x is holding is minus 2 and then we are subtracting 3 from it which means minus 2 minus 3 that is going to add up to minus 5. So we have to print the value of x and y so uh, we can definitely predict the output as minus 5 and 5. So uh, I have again uh, provided the uh, basic examples and explanations to all of them in the comments and uh, as you can see that uh, the output here in this case is minus 5 and 5. So uh, that's it that's the video all about. So I hope you enjoyed the first part of pseudocodes for Infosys InfiTQ examination. Make sure to do as much practice as possible for pseudocodes because this is one section where students get disqualified the most because apart from pseudocodes you have aptitude and uh, database uh, questions as well. However, it is the pseudocodes which is going to do the killing. So make sure you be well prepared for that. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video, share this video to the one who might need it. And as always, keep learning and keep programming.